Okay, so let's first define what a ratio is. What does a ratio do? Measure something, do you agree? Okay, so let's write a note. Used for measuring financial information. I see they've recapped the users of accounting here. They say requirements of users. Right, so do you agree different users will require different things? Okay, so uh, the next bullet. Different users use different ratios. Different users use, use different ratios. Uh, just to go through some examples here, uh, what would a manager want to know about the business? What would be important to a manager? To find a business. Create control. Okay, so they would want to control the business. Employees, they would want to know how much wages they're going to get paid. Okay, these are some of the ones they discuss here. Shareholders, what would they want to know? Is the business. Does that funds? Yeah, does it make a profit? Yeah. Okay, shareholders want to know if they made a profit. So those are just some examples. Uh, next bit would be the data and information. Okay, so second point. Ratios require data. Okay, so we need the data in order to do the calculations. Ratios require data. Um, they talk about trends and vertical and ratio analysis. So there's four here. Uh, let's just put in brackets. So ratios require data, uh, comma, four types of analysis. So this is the data that we've got, and this is the analysis we can do. Okay, so the first one, A, horizontal analysis. So the first one is horizontal analysis. Don't worry. Yeah, no, take the banana. We'll have. Ready. Okay. So first one, horizontal. Okay. First one, horizontal. Okay. So horizontal means this way, right? Flat. Okay, so horizontal analysis is line by line by line. Okay, that's the key. Horizontal in brackets, you can say line by line. That's even how they describe it here. Okay, so we'll be looking at each line. So, for example, salaries and wages, um, water, electricity, stationery. Okay, we can analyze different lines and we can look at the actual. Um, trends. Okay, so that's the next one. Number two, trend analysis. Okay, so a trend would be is it going up or down or is it flat? Okay, so are the expenses increasing or are they decreasing? Is the income going up or down? Okay, that's two. Third one, vertical analysis. Uh, well, you could say increase, decrease, or constant. Okay, so things are staying the same, things are increasing or decreasing.
Third one, vertical analysis. Okay, vertical is like uh, up to down, right? Like like this vertical, like a pole. Okay, a pole that's um, lamppost. Okay, anything that's vertical. Okay, so vertical year by year. Okay, column by column. So then we're looking at one year compared to another because generally with the financial statements you'll have columns representing different years. And the last one is the ratio analysis. Yes, okay, so you've got the four types of analysis. Four the ratios. Right, so the textbook talks more about the ratios because that's obviously the focus. So underneath this one, they talk about two things here. The first thing is the performance evaluation, and the second thing is why use ratios. Okay, so let's start with the why. Why do you think a ratio is a good idea? It's for the preservation of its business. Yeah, it's, to, it's summarizing information, correct? It's, it's, it's making the statements more, let's say, readable. Okay, so we've got data, we've got information. Like a financial statement for the income statement will tell us about the business's income and expenses. But that's about it. So the ratios allow us to dig a bit deeper. Okay, so you could say uh, in terms of the first reason, it would be um, summarizing information. Focusing on specific areas, so we could look at one thing, we could look at profitability, we could look at liquidity, we could look at one area of the business. So, analyzing an area of the business. Okay, so a specific area of the business. Okay, they haven't broken up into too much. Um, next to areas of the business, you can say brackets. There's four that, they, that they're looking at here. The first one is profitability, profitability, liquidity, efficiency, and investment. Those are four areas. Profitability, liquidity, efficiency. All right, so those are the four types they mentioned here. Um, they spoke about performance evaluation. So the word evaluation means to decide if something is doing well or not. Okay, is it good or bad? Um, if the profit is going down, is it good or bad? That's bad. Um, if the assets are going up, is that good or bad? Good. Okay, so that's just performance evaluation. I don't know if you want to make a note about that. Okay, yeah, it is. Okay, so now we need to look at the ratios. Okay, so uh, maybe start a new page because we're going to write down formulas. Uh, let's see how many there are in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, there's twelve. 12 ratios that you need to study for the exams. Okay, so if you want to, you can put a heading, different types of ratios. Okay, because now we're looking at the ratios specifically. Okay, so the first one, return on capital employed. That's the first one. Uh, maybe let's group them as well like they've done it here. So put a subheading, just say profitability ratios. And then we'll, we'll write down all the profitability ratios. Then we'll keep them together. Okay, so profitability refers to what? That we've looked at before. How profitable the business is. And how do we determine that? Hundred percent. Okay, good. So underneath that, you can just write down return on capital employed. 
Is this the first one? That's the first ratio. Return on capital employed. Okay, they refer to that as R-O-C-E. Okay, as an acronym. What is R-O-C-E. It's just okay. an acronym. Okay, so what is the formula? It's actually very simple. Uh, numerator and denominator. The numerator is profit for the year before interest and tax. Profit for the year before interest and tax. So we don't take off interest and tax. It's before we take off the interest and tax. Okay. And then that whole thing divided by capital employed. Okay, capital, you should still remember, is money that's invested in the business, do you agree? Okay, where else can we get capital from? Um, contributions. Uh, well, that's from the owners, or? Loans. Loans, exactly. Okay, debt and equity, basically. Alright, so, uh, let's just see here. Okay, they've given you two notes about the capital employed, so let's write down the equations for it. Okay, so the first one, uh, this is for calculating capital employed. Okay, so we know capital employed is basically debt and equity, but it's specific here in terms of this formula. Uh, to get capital employed, you can either use this, so equation one, total assets minus current liabilities. That's capital employed. Okay, so... Capital employed equals... Total assets minus current liabilities. That's the one. Okay, so if they give you information relating to the assets and the current liabilities, you can work it out. There's two equations. The second one is... So sorry, Captain employed was? Total assets. Mm -hmm. Minus current liabilities. Or, capital employed equals issued equity plus reserves plus long-term capital, long-term loan capital. Okay, so those are, two those are the two equations for capital employed. Okay, based on the textbooks. Definition. Okay, perfect. Right, next, number two. Gross profit percentage. Slash gross margin. There's two names for it. They've given both here. Gross profit percentage or? Slash uh, gross margin. So, when you see the word gross, you should be thinking about gross profits. Right, so the formula for this one is gross profit divided by revenue. That's the formula. Um, both of these are times by 100 because they're percentages. Okay, so maybe just show that as well. So gross profit over revenue? Yeah, over revenue divided by revenue times 100 because it's a percentage. Most of these are percentages. Okay, that's the formula. Right, gross profit, do you want to make a note? Do you still know how to calculate it? Yeah, that's fine. Sales minus cost of sales, right? Okay. Right, next one, number two, uh, three. This one is markup. Do they mention what this markup is on? No, they don't. Okay, so it's just general, general markup. Uh, looking at the formula, it looks like a markup on cost, but they don't specify that. Okay, so for marker, gross profit over cost of sales. Times 100 again because it's a percentage.
here. Okay, next one. Four would be profit margin. Okay, the profit here is profit for the year after interest. So profit for the year after interest. That's so the numerator. numerator. Profit. Yeah, profit for the year after interest. Divided by. So three after interest. Yeah. Divided by revenue. Revenue is the denominator. Again, times by 100 because it's a. Says that you think. Right, there's another one. And these are all already basic, it's just looking at profitability. Obviously, all these ratios, the bigger the number, the better. Okay, because that's more profitability. My right, next one expenses to revenue ratio. Expenses to revenue ratio. Is still under profitability? Yeah, still under profitability. That's the last one for this one. Expenses to revenue ratio. Okay, the formula is expenses numerator that divided by. Okay, so denominator is just revenue. <coughs> Expenses over revenue times 100, that's a percentage. Okay, that's the last one. Okay, uh, after all of these, just asterisks, let's put a little note. Uh, no, uh, number six is a different topic altogether. Well, a different group of oh, ratios. Yeah, yeah you've a different group. So now we've looked at five ratios relating to what? Profitability. Okay, just a side note here after all of these, just asterisks. Yeah, I just put an asterisk. Profitability ratios. Evaluate the financial performance of the business. Okay, so that's the reason why we're looking at it. Okay, it's performance. Okay, how has the company performed? So right. Evaluate. Uh, evaluates the financial performance. You just say higher ratios are better. Okay, so performance wise, we want ratios that are big. Okay, so 50%, 20%, 10%. Okay, obviously, the bigger the percentage, the better. Okay, right, next, next category subheading this uh, liquidity ratios. How many are these? Let's see, one, two, oh, okay, and two. Short section. Okay. First one, current ratio. Okay, the word current actually helps you to remember what the actual formula is. Current ratio is looking at current assets over current liabilities. That's it. Okay, so numerator current assets divided by denominator current liabilities. Okay, for these we need to put a little bit of interpretation. Okay, so in terms of what's a good ratio, what's a bad ratio. Okay, so looking at that ratio, current assets divided by current liabilities, which would you want to be bigger? Yes. yes, okay, the numerator. So if the numerator is bigger, the answer should always be greater than one. Okay, so greater than one, greater than one is, is what we want. Okay, greater than one. So if the ratio is one comma something or two, three, four, whatever, greater than one is better.
less than one is bad. What is that? Is that greater than one? Uh, less than one. Uh, greater than one would have been this, but the one on that side. Yeah, that's all. So that side. Greater but than one. Yeah, greater than one, that's right. Yes, greater than one. <coughs> okay, next ratio. Uh, they talk about quick and acid test, so that's good, it's the same as before. Two different names for the same ratio. The quick ratio slash the acid test ratio. It's just two different names. Acid test or quick. Okay, the formula is similar to the current uh, the current ratio, except you're taking out inventory. Okay, so the numerator is a bracket. Current assets minus inventory divided by liabilities, current liabilities. Current assets. Mm -hmm. Minus inventory. Close brackets. All divided by current liabilities. Okay, that's that. Same thing applies there. Numerator must be bigger than denominator, so greater than one is what you're wanting. Okay, li good liquidity would be greater than one. Okay. <coughs> Next subheading. Sorry, let me just write that. Um, greater than one is what we're looking at. Okay, you want a ratio that's bigger than one. If it's bigger than one, that represents good liquidity. Okay, perfect. Uh, the last section of ratios, there's five here. Okay. The heading, efficiency ratios. Efficiency ratios. Obviously, the word efficiency is referring to how well are we operating. Okay, are we operating and are we doing well or aren't we? Yeah, okay, that's what efficiency is looking at. Okay, so the first ratio for efficiency is called the non-current asset turnover ratio. It's quite a long name. Okay, so the first one, non-current asset turnover ratio. Non-current asset turnover ratio. Okay, these names kind of help you remember these things, okay? Because when you see the word non-current assets, obviously that's going to be part of the equation. equation. Right, so that's actually the denominator, but we'll write down the formula, okay? So numerator is net revenue. Denominator is total carrying amount of non-current assets. Total carrying amount. Okay, the reason why they use carrying amount is because remember non-current assets can be depreciated. Okay, that we've looked at. Okay, of non-current assets. Well, that's the formula. Okay, no times a hundred. Why? The answer is number of times. Okay. Right. So that we that we need to put a note uh, just to differentiate because other ratios have been percentages. This one is a. Uh, so the answer, you can just say something like that, just, just say, uh, just put a number times, or x times, like x and then times, so the answer is the number of times, okay, turn over, okay, so 10 times, 5 times, 4 times, it's how often we're selling our, um, or using our non-current assets to make a sale, basically, yeah, times is the answer, okay. Right, that's the first one. Uh, second one, trade receivables turnover.
the other name for this average collection period okay this one you might even recognize from last year trade receivables turnover, turnover slash okay there's two names for it uh, they've given you both so depending on what they ask you how they how they refer to it okay turnover slash average collection period that's the other name average collection period here's the formula numerator over denominator numerator is trade receivables that's the numerator denominator credit sales Times 365. Okay, the answer is in days. Okay, so that you can also make a note. This one, the answer was in times. Okay, number of times a year. Okay, here, once you've done this calculation, um, you're going to get the number of days. Okay, so this example, we had 34 days, 41 days. Well, that's how often we're turning over the debtors, or that's the average collection period. Okay, All right, good. That one you've done. Three more. Trade, payables, turnover. So it's, it's the opposite to what we just looked at. Now we're looking at the creditors, not the debtors. Okay, so trade, payables, turnover. The other name for it, average payment period. That's the other name. Okay, so they can ask you to calculate either the trade payables turnover ratio or the average payment period. You just need to remember that this refers to this equation. Okay, the equation is, numerator is trade payables, denominator is credit purchases. Right, and that kind of makes sense, because what do you do with your creditors? Do you buy or do you sell? What to do with your credit as you buy? You buy, exactly. So that's why the denominator is credit purchases. Right, again, easy way to remember it. Even if we look at the second one, trade receivables, what do I do with my debtors? I sell to them. So the denominator is credit times sales. Yeah, also times 365. Why? The answer is a period. Okay, number of days. Number of days. Okay. Last one, uh, so second last one, there's two more. Inventory turnover. Okay, the inventory turnover ratio, the numerator is average inventory held. Average inventory held divided by cost of sales. This one is also times 365. Okay, it's also in days. Right, and the last one. Rates of inventory turnover. Rates of inventory turnover. That's the last one for the ratios. Last equation. Right, and the formula for this is cost of sales divided by average inventory held during the year cost of sales divided by so yeah numerator denominator the denominator is average inventory held during the year okay so these efficiency ratios basically look at how well do you operate okay do you manage your stock do you manage your debtors do you manage your creditors average inventory held during the year Okay, then on the last page of this chapter, there's just a note about limitations of the accounting information. So let's put a, a note here about theory. Limitations. 
uh, yeah, limitations of using accounting information to assess performance. Okay, that could be a theory question in the um, assignment. We can actually do the assignment just now. Limitations? Yeah, limitations <coughs> of, using, of using accounting information to assess performance. Okay, so what what is the um, what is the disadvantage of accounting information? The biggest disadvantage, if you think about what the, what its purpose is, what does the accounting information actually do? Gives you information relating to to the past. Okay, so uh, the limitations with using this to assess performance it's, it's always in the past. It's always historical. Okay, we don't know what the current scenario is. Okay, so you're not measuring the current situation. You're measuring last yes. year or last month or last whatever. Okay, so results are based on historical costs or figures. Okay, you can just say figures. Yes, um, measuring the past. Yeah, measuring the past is fine. Um, emphasis is on past results. That's what they also described in the textbook. Um, you can say... What else did they mention? Yeah, okay, I think that's fine. It's historical cost, historical figures, emphasis is on the past. Okay. <coughs> Another point, it only gives an overview. Okay, so ratios only give an overview. If you want detail, you've got to dig deeper in the actual financial statement okay, to get more information. Okay, ratios just summarize stuff, it just gives an overview. A uh, second thing would be sometimes difficult to compare businesses okay, because businesses aren't always exactly the same. So it might be a little bit unfair to compare, let's say, a big company to a small company. But obviously, they're different. Okay, It'll be easier to compare a small company with a small company. So sometimes it's difficult to compare businesses. Um, and then they also mentioned external environments. Uh, the impact. So certain external things can affect the ratios. Okay, so you can just say the external environments may impact the business. That's that's kind of what they've said here. They've said changes may have an immediate impact or result on the company. There may be one more point. Different organizations have different structures. Not all businesses are the same. Okay. That covers that section.